Howdy! Our Aggie Challenge research team is exploring the feasibility of advanced vapor compression desalination. As the population grows, so does the problem of being able to supply fresh water to meet human needs. According to the United Nations, the global population will be 9.7 billion by the year 2050. Many countries today are already having trouble providing fresh water for their communities, so imagine how extreme this crisis will be 30 years from now. Out of the total water on Earth, only 3% is fresh water. Of that, only 1% is readily accessible. By the year 2025, it is predicted that 1.8 billion people will live in water-scarce regions. The ocean has a nearly infinite supply of water and almost half of the population lives within 120 miles of the coast. This makes seawater desalination a viable option for supplying fresh water. A desalination process called reverse osmosis is the most common method used today. This technology forces pressurized seawater through membranes that only lets water pass. This process suffers because the membranes have short lives and have to be replaced every three to five years due to unexpected failures from biological fouling. Our process of advanced vapor compression desalination competes with this leading technology because it overcomes all the problems reverse osmosis has. It is a five-stage process that consists of carbonate and sulfate removal, sensible and latent heat exchangers, shaft power, compressors, and desuperheaters. First, the seawater enters the carbonate and sulfate removal where the carbonates are dissolved into CO2 gas and pulled out by a vacuum while the sulfates are removed by using weak base anion exchange resins. Next, the steam that results from a power source is transferred to the sensible heat exchangers to heat the pretreated water. The latent heat exchangers are considered the heart of our desalination process. They are made of two chambers. The left contains the treated seawater and the right contains the desalinated water. The seawater enters the left chamber and is vaporized into brine and distilled water by heat flow while the steam in the right chamber condenses. From the left chamber, the steam moves to a compressor where the pressure is increased and the steam becomes superheated. In order to desuperheat the steam while retaining the higher pressure, some desalinated water is split from the main stream and sprayed into this desuperheater. Before the steam enters the right chamber, some is split and fed into the main steam stream to help heat the salt water. Finally, the steam is condensed in the right chamber due to negative heat flow. According to our analysis, the cost is significantly lower to use our desalination process at approximately 33 cents per cubic meter, while the least expensive reverse osmosis plant desalinates at 58 cents per cubic meter. Our process competes with the reverse osmosis because it has a lower capital cost, higher energy efficiency, a higher recovery rate, and lower maintenance requirements. We consider this technology eco-friendly because this process will decrease use of valuable groundwater and recycle waste heat. Also, this process is very desirable because the equipment is packaged in shipping containers so it can be transported and installed at any coastal city. For future research, we are focused on calculating the energy efficiency if we increase the number of heat exchangers. The more we increase, the more the process approximates reversible evaporation. Also, because the heat exchangers are the core of the technology, tests must be performed on prototype heat exchangers to validate their performance. And lastly, we will look into commercializing the technology based on experimental data because if the experimental results align with the theoretical results, this technology could indeed provide the least expensive source of desalinated water on the planet.